Hey, Chris here from Video Maker, and I'm here to show you our review of the Shure Motive line from the MV51, MV5, MV88, the MVI, and the MVL. So what we did is we taped me uh, testing all these out. You're gonna be able to hear what they all sound like in different situations. And then when we come back, we're gonna just break it down a little bit, talk about what we experienced using them, some of the likes and dislikes we have and strengths and weaknesses, as well as their value in the marketplace and who they're for. So without further ado, here are those tests. Right now you're listening to the lapel mic, which is the Shure MVL. And well, you can hear what I'm sounding like. I'm just gonna keep talking. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, the products that we have here. So I have first the MV51, which is this bad boy right here. It's got a little kickstand and you can mount it to a tripod. And then I have the MV5, which mounts this little nifty little uh, stand here. It goes on your desktop, and you have a little volume knob here and, uh, and what have you, a couple of different buttons for different modes. As well, we have the MV88, which is a stereo microphone that goes into the iPhone. Right now, I'm recording this on an iPhone 6 Plus. I'm in airplane mode, so there's no interruption. Shouldn't be any kind of interference whatsoever. And so far, this has been the MVL lapel mic from Sure, and we're gonna cut here and I'm gonna go to one of these other products. Talking to you right now through the MVI, I'm using a Sure SM7A, and this is, um, well, the what you'd use to make really any input digital, so you can have an XLR or an instrument input and it will make it digital so you can go into your phone. Uh, I'm recording on the Motive app right now onto my iPhone 6, and well, what you can hear right now is what it sounds like. So uh, we're going to switch right now to a boom mic, and I'll tell you what model that is in a second. And uh, when we come back, you'll be able to tell what the difference is using a different microphone on this input device, the MVI. Okay, so this is now the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone going through the MVI, and you can hear what it sounds like. Now it's further away from me, so it should be a little more roomy, and it should feel a little more natural than the microphone being right up on the FM7A, that is. Um, so this is, you've been listening to the MVI as part of the Sure Motive line. So this is the MV5. It uh, is just a microphone by itself. It's got two different modes. Um, it has the vocal mode and the instrument mode. So this so far has been just flat, no limiter, no compression, going directly into the app, uh, right into the MV5. So, um, you know, the build quality of this guy, you can probably hear me touching it there, uh, is uh, pretty neat. But I must say the MV51, which is the next thing we're going to test after we test this with an instrument, is definitely built to survive. So let's switch now to the instrument mode on the MV5. So this is the MV5 on instrument mode. So let's try it with a little less gain and with my guitar pick now. So this is the MV51. I'm uh, right now in flat mode, so you can hear what it sounds like with no compression, no limiting, no nothing. And let me switch then to vocal mode, which or voiceover mode here. So this is vocal mode with compression and limiter on. You can hear the differences between the two, between flat and compressed. Uh, depending on how much time you have in your workflow, this might be helpful for you. I personally would rather record it flat and then add effects later. But if you're on the go and you don't want any more hours in post, this might be a good option for you. Now we're not going to test vocal mode. You don't want to hear me sing. Um, so we'll switch to... Um, instrument mode and we'll listen to the guitar. So here's the MV51 on a guitar. Here's no pick and we'll do with pick in a second.
Okay, now I'm gonna lower the input so that we don't clip when using the pick as it is quite more dynamics. So for the MV88, we got a band called the Silent Towns to play us one of their songs. And we have one little snippet of their song. And what they are is a 12-string acoustic guitar, 6-string acoustic guitar, a synthesizer, and three vocalists. The vocalists and the synthesizer are going through the PA system. The others, the two acoustic guitars, are actually just uh, acoustic in the room. No uh, audio support at all through the PA or through amplifiers at all. And, uh, well, you're going to hear what it sounds like just as if you were in the room using the MV88 stereo mic and we didn't tape this so there's no video of it but we're gonna have a picture of the situation that's there uh, for you to at least look at something while we're showing you this test here you go So there you have it. That was a lot of tests to listen to. Uh, hopefully they helped you really understand what these are gonna sound like. So let's go down and talk about what all we thought of the results as well as using them and their place in the marketplace. So let's start off with the MVL, the lavalier mic. For 70 bucks, it's a great deal. We were happy with it. Uh, you pretty much have a wireless lav if you have a uh, iOS device uh, to plug into and you're, you're ready to go. Using the Sure Plus Motive app, um, you're able to add compression and limiter to it. You're able to adjust the gain. Uh, we thought it sounded really good and for 70 bucks, it really, it's a good value. Um, it's the only one of the five products that goes in tip ring ring sleeve through the eighth inch uh, headphone jack on the iOS device. So that's the only way you're gonna be able to use it that way. But it, it sounded really good and we were really happy. Um, and it's a good value. So at 70 bucks, if you need a lav and you already have an iOS device like an iPad or an iPhone, you're ready to go and you can make just great sounding recordings. Now the MVI is just like the MV5 and the MV51 in that it's both lightning connector as well as USB. So you can go into your computer or into your iOS device. And well, we thought it sounded really good. You know, the SM7A 
sounds great all the time. It's a really cool mic. We love it. It's definitely great for vocals and uh, voiceover work. And then the um, shotgun mic, the NTG2, sounded really good too. Sounds like it normally does. So the preamp in there, it's a class A preamp. Sounds really good. You can uh, record at 24 bit um, at 48 Hertz. So you definitely have the high quality there. Now it's uh, 130 bucks. So you have one input, uh, for your uh, device uh, with that. You have a headphone jack and you know that's good. It's not necessarily the cheapest in the marketplace but it sounded really nice. It was very transparent and didn't have uh, any noise associated with it so that was nice. So overall a uh, good product but pretty simple. It is really robustly built. It's you know metal on the outside. It's, it's heavy so it's gonna be able to take quite a bit of uh, use and abuse um, as really sure I think is well known for making high quality products like their SM57, SM58 that, I mean, they can be run over and they still work. I mean, they might look junky, but they still work. But these are reviews for the Motive line. So we were happy with that. I don't think it's the best price in the marketplace, but if you need a mobile input on the go, if you are looking for a solution for your iOS device, it's a great one and it's definitely a good price when you're talking about for the iOS device. Now as a USB uh, input, you definitely have lots of other options that are out there from just a plethora of uh, brands that make one, two, up to eight or even more inputs. But as far as in this price point, uh, maybe you could even get two uh, inputs uh, as well. Let's jump to the MV5. Now the MV5 is a hundred bucks. It's very similar to like the Blue Mic um, Snowball and is around the same price point. It's smaller and it is, feels a little bit more robustly built. So it is plastic, but you can get it in the silver color. It does seem pretty stout, but you know, unlike the other products like the 51 and the MVI, um, they're, it's not metal. So, I mean, the stand's nice, but it's kind of tiny. Um, you know, it's down here, it's pretty far away from my voice. So if I want a good, sound from a voiceover, I want to be like this, as well as plosives like your P's and your S's and your T's and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, those are going to pop if you don't have a pop filter. So you're either going to have to talk into it off axis or um, get a pop screen. So that ends up making it a little less mobile because you'll have to bring another piece of equipment with it. But this can go into your iOS device as well as a USB, um, like a computer or something like that. Now the 51, the MV51, overall probably the best sound quality. It's a large diaphragm condenser. It's gonna sound good there. You're gonna be able to use it for a lot more than just voice um, use. Uh, the uh, MV5, you know, sounded all right on the instrument and so did this, uh, but I think with some placement, you're gonna get more out of the large diaphragm condenser, um, as well as you can mount it on a, a stand, which we've talked about just by unscrewing here, and now it'll screw on the, the end of a mic stand and you can get better mic placement. And that's gonna be key to getting the best sound possible. Um, now at $200, it's not really a great deal. Uh, you can get stuff that's a standalone recorder like the H4 uh, from Zoom, for like 50 bucks more, and you would also have two XLR inputs as well. You have multi-track optioning with that as well, as well built-in effects and, and that kind of thing. So it, it's probably a little bit a better deal, but it's plastic. Um, I've owned one and, and I've cracked the case of it. Um, now that was from improper use, but it definitely nonetheless was easy to break uh, or easier. This is metal. It's, it's definitely uh, stout and robust in its build quality. Uh, you have a headphone jack so you can listen to what you're doing. Um, and so, you know, there are better values out there. It sounds really good. So, you know, it depends on what you're going for there. What we really would have loved is to see a hybrid of the 51 and the MVI so that you had an input on this. So if you did that, if it was these two guys together as one, uh, this would be a really great deal. Um, but being that it's just the microphone by itself, $200 is probably a little bit on the high end of what its value is for what it does. Lastly, the MV88, uh, it sounded really good. The only problem that we had is one, this is only for an iOS device, so you can't use this with the USB, but that it just goes in with the um, lightning here and that's just not enough connectivity for it to sound good all the time. We definitely had a, a little bit of recordings that had pops in it from this connector not being in all the way and that we had to kind of position it in the right place. And the thing is, is if you're using one of these devices to record, uh, say a concert, some kind of live performance or whatever, you might not have the just perfect little place to 
to balance it on. You might have to be holding it. And then the only thing that's keeping this really straight is that input. And so you could be putting more wear on the lightning connector on your iOS device, as well as you have the ability for it to, um, you know, add pops and stuff from just having a, a poor connection. But 150 bucks might be a little bit on the steep. I, what I really would have liked is most all of these to be 100 bucks. I think they would have made it a lot more valuable. Um, I think we could have probably even paid more for the LAV so that these could be cheaper. I'm not sure, but uh, 100 bucks would have been a, a better price point for all of these. So who are these products for? Um, well, they're for the person that needs the recordist that needs to be on the go. So if you need an iOS device recording option, all of these are gonna be great solutions for you. They are probably a little bit more pricey because they have that iOS connectivity versus just like a USB device. So you need to bring a laptop of some sort or well, a non Apple tablet um, that has a USB uh, input on it or what have you. Um, but you know, they're gonna be good for those uses. You're just gonna be very mobile. I mean, I just need this and a cable and I'm ready to have any input. Uh, that's great. You know, you got a mic and all you need is a mic and a cable and your phone and your recording. That's really, really helpful. Um, and you know, if you're at a, uh, you know, a concert or some kind of live event, all you gotta do is slip this in your pocket along with your iPhone and you're ready to go. And you're gonna be able to get nice quality sound recordings if of course you make sure the connectivity is there so you're not uh, adding pops from this connection point being weak. So there you have it. That's the motive line by sure. If you're thinking about buying one of these and you'd like to help support us make videos like these, well, you can click on the link in the description and it'll take you to buying any one of these. Uh, all five products as well will have for the Blue Microphones uh, Snowball as well as the Zoom H4 if those are maybe the route you would like to go on. As always, like, share, and comment. We wanna know what you think. We want your feedback. And as always, we really, really appreciate you watching. I'm Chris from Video Maker. Until next time, keep doing the hard work that you do.